Hey guys, welcome back to Pine Hollow Auto Diagnostics. Today I'm at a different shop in the field. This is a local shop here in State College. And they got a really interesting issue here with this 2004 Pontiac Grand Am. It's got the 3 4. <clears throat> Let's show you uh, what's inside here. Alright, so we got a mess. This box here. This is a gizmo for, uh, you know, I guess if you get a few DUIs in a row, they'll give you this box so you can like blow into it. It's called a blow and go. I've never seen one. Smart start. So basically if it gives you the green light after you uh, blow in it, you can, you can drive. You don't have alcohol in your breath or something like that. And uh, they just installed this camera here. So I guess it takes a picture of you when you uh, get in the car or something. Um, so the history is this car is from Florida this was already installed and I guess for Pennsylvania they need to rewire it somehow differently put in a camera who knows what and uh, you know I guess just reinitialize it like reprogram it and that's when the problem started so now the problem is, they say when you turn the key to the accessory position, it'll blow a main fuse, like a 40 amper. So somewhere in here there's a direct short, short to ground apparently, that's blowing this fuse. So you can't start the car, you can't do anything. Uh, they've gone through like four fuses, and right now... They have this plug disconnected here, and they say, you know, with this plug disconnected, it doesn't blow anything. That's good information. So we just need to track down these wiring colors and see what that fuse feeds. And uh, find the source of the problem, where this current's going. Now, I, I don't want to blow any more fuses, right? Those 60 amp fuses or 40 amp fuses, they're pretty expensive. So, uh, and, you know, I'll show you a method that that I used to track down these short to ground issues. Uh, in this case, hooking up a little test light, you know, 200 milliamps, that's not quite enough current to track it down, you know, using an amp clamp. I want something a little beefier, so I rigged up a beefy test light, like amps, you know, like 5 amps. Uh, I'll show you how that works. So let's, uh, let's look up some wiring diagrams and uh, go from there. All right, here's a, here's a fuse box. This is the 40 amp fuse, now it's a 60 amp. That's blowing, and that's number seven right here. And that is our ignition switch battery one 40 amp fuse. So let's pull up the diagram, see where that goes. Well, here's the main wiring diagram for the power distribution from BBB Industries. So here we go. Ignition switch battery one, 40 amp. That is our fuse right there that's blowing. So now we need to see what that feeds. Come down here, ignition switch battery one, 40 amp fuse. Right there. Does feed our ignition switch on a red wire. And they say when you turn it to accessory, something, you know, it blows. And then there's another, it goes to ignition switch bus on that B wire, and that goes to right here, hot at all times, dark green. Dark green goes to fuse block, left instrument panel, accessory fuse, there and there. Okay, so this ignition switch, see there's connector C1, connector C3, connector C, C2 and C1. So it comes in on a fat red wire on connector C2 and then if you follow B right there it'll leave on a dark green the connector C1. So let's see if we can find these wires. Let's see if we can recreate the problem. I'll show you uh, my test light setup and uh, we'll go from here. 
So for now I'm going to remove this 60 amp fuse and instead of that we're going to install a fog lamp. Now this guy is 55 watts so it draws a little more than 4 amps. Five, almost 5 amps at 12 volts. So let's uh, plug that in here. Make sure you have a good connection. And we'll point it right towards our window so we can see when our short is occurring. So when that light's bright, you know, we'll be, uh, that leg will be shorted to ground. So let's see if that works. So as you can see in here, this is a mess. There are wires, just bare wires, spliced, twisted. I wouldn't be surprised if the problem was in this area, since we have all these bare wires, you know, might be touching metal somewhere or touching each other. I mean, that's, that's ridiculous. So let's see if we can recreate this problem. All right, got the ignition switch plugged back in. No wires are touching or anything. I hope not. So let's turn it to accessory. And look at our test lamp. Bright lamp right now on Radio Works. So, no. So basically, we have full current right now. So let's see. Uh, let's see where it's going. It's got to be going through the ignition switch. All right. So I'm assuming it's coming in on this red wire. We got our five amps on there, and it's leaving on. I'm assuming one of these. Let's try the green one. I said the green one was leaving on the green one. There it is. There's our five amps. Let's see where that green wire goes. We'll turn it off so we don't drain our battery. Turn that off. All right. So back to the wiring diagram. Let's see here. Dark green on connector one. That's our guy right there. And that feeds PCM accessory, 10 amp fuse, and the fuse block left instrument panel. Obviously it would be blowing one of those fuses <laughs> if it got that far. So our problem is somewhere between the ignition switch and this fuse block left instrument panel. Somewhere in here in that dark green wire. So let's just make sure. On connector C1, let's see we have B, C, and dark green was E. So, so that guy right there in that cavity. I don't know what else is in here. There's a red with a black tracer. I don't know where that goes, but oh man, I mean, what a mess. Aftermarket junk, you know. <laughs> this is crazy. So first thing I want to do is with the key in the accessory position and our big test lamp lit up, take these two fuses out. PGM accessory fuse G and IPC BFC accessory fuse I. And looking at our little fuse panel here, G and I. So on the right hand side, there you go, G and I. Let's see if we can find those over here. It's gonna be that guy and that guy. So let's pop these out. Little handy needle nose pliers. There's one. Make a little. Let's uh, retry our test. Again. Test lamp is bright, so our current is not going to through these fuses. 
So we've narrowed down the problem from the ignition switch to this fuse box right here. So let's see if we can find that wire and uh, measure current on it. Alright guys, here's why I love this job. Check this out. Shreddage on the wiring harness due to I think chafing on a metal bracket. And right here, see if I can get you a close-up of where the carnage is. See that green wire? That's right, right in there. There it is, there's our burn mark. It was touching. See that sharp metal bracket and the uh, conduit's all torn up? That's it. So now it's uh, just a question of fixing some wires and the guy's finishing up her job here with the uh, installation of that smart box. But there it is. Rub through wires.